my name is Rachel Henson, and I am one of the archivists here at the Carl Albert Center. I work with the Congressional and Political Collections here at the Center, and I am recording this screencast to show you our holdings, our collections, and show you how to search through our Finding Aid database. Before I get started on the tutorial, I'd like to point out that you can browse through all of our holdings by going to our main website, the ou.edu backslash Carl Albert Center, and clicking on Congressional and Political Collections. From here, you can submit appointment requests and reference requests, as well as find the link to search for finding aids and digital collections. To browse all of our holdings, first click the Browse by Congressional Collection tab. This page allows you to look at all of the collections that the Carl Albert Center holds by member of Congress last name. The page will give you a brief overview of the member and link you to their collection. You can do the same by browsing political collections. These collections are created by state level politicians, journalists, political organizations, and other people closely associated with politics. Additionally, you can use this website to browse through our digital holdings. These collections are digitized groupings of archival material from our collections, either by topic or by collection itself. So for instance, the Dick T. Morgan Digital Archives is a comprehensive digitization of the Dick T. Morgan collection, whereas the Carl Albert Congressional Research and Studies Center Human Rights Digital Archive Collection are resources compiled by subject from all of our collections. Now you'd like to search the finding aids of the Carl Albert Center. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll navigate to arc.ou.edu where you'll find this website here. This website contains all of the finding aids for collections at the Carl Albert Center as well as collections that are in other archives on OU's campus. From this main homepage, you can use the search box here, or at any time you can click the magnifying glass to return to this page. And this search is what I like to call the main search, which will search all collections that are hosted on this website, including collections that are not at the Carl Albert Center. So we're going to go ahead and use this main search box here. And as an example, I'm going to search the word Japan. Now, my reasoning behind using this word is because I'd like to find a map of Japan from a particular year. But when I just search the word Japan, I get 432 results. And that's quite a lot of results. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to filter by repository, or you can think of that as an archive, um, and I want to see only collections found at the Carl Albert Center. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Carl Albert Center Congressional and Political Collections filter. And you can see here that that has narrowed down my results to 423. Now I am only seeing results that 
are found in the collections at the Carl Albert Center. But I'm looking for a map, and a lot of these don't say that there are any maps found anywhere. So what I'm going to do is then filter by keyword, or as the website calls it, search within results. So in this search box, I'm going to type map, and then click search. And you can see that's narrowed down the results quite a lot to only four results. Now my main goal was to find a map of Japan from 1935. Well, I can see that easily here, but in case there were more results on this page, I'm going to show you how to filter by year. So you can use this from year to year for some collections, but unfortunately it doesn't work on all of our collections, so I like to be, play it safe and type the year here into the search within results. Then click search, and I have arrived at the map that I'd like to see. I can see here that it is a actually a folder. You can tell by the word file right here. If it were just one single item, it would say item here. And you can see what box and folder it's in. And I can see the title of the folder, which is here, and it's clickable. And then here where it says scope and contents, this is actually a quick description of what is found within the folder, or if it were an item that had scope and contents, it would give you a quick description of the actual item itself. I can also see here in the found in section where this result comes from. So I can see that it's from the Carl Albert Center, it's from the Wilburn Cartwright Collection, and it's from Cartwright's Travel Files series. So that's the quick overview of the sort of uh, preview of the results that the website shows you in the list. But you can actually click on the result that you're interested in to find even more information. So if you navigate to the guide that's on the website that is explaining what I'm going over in this video, you can see that I have taken a screenshot of this result and sort of color coded all of the items on this page to tell you exactly what they are. But again, I, can, I will be going over this in the video. So here in big blue letters, this is the folder title and also it displays the date as well, but that's also found further down. You can see here that it's a folder where it says file here, and which box and which folder number it is. This identifier number here, which looks like a long string of random letters and numbers, actually sort of acts like a barcode for the archivists. So if you save this, you can copy and paste it or write it down on a piece of paper and email us later, we will be able to locate that specific folder very easily for you. Uh, whether you would like it to be scanned or whether you would like to come in and see this particular folder in person in our reading room. The next piece down is what I like to call the breadcrumbs, but it lets you know where in the collection that you're located. Again, this was also on the preview of the result but you can see that you're found, you're located in the Carl Albert Center in the Wilburn Cartwright Collection and in his Travel Files series. This last item here, it's not clickable, but it's the same as the folder title, so you know that it's referencing this folder that you're in. You can click on any of these and it'll take you back one step in the collection. Here again is the scope and contents or the brief description of what's in the folder. It's not labeled anymore, but it says the same thing as it said on the preview. The 
dates are listed. Here it's from 1935. You can see the language of the materials is listed as English, but there's likely some Japanese in the folder as well. The physical description says that the folder contains 10 items. And here you can see the conditions governing access, which is just the note that comes from the uh, overall collection to let you know that there are some things that you might ask for from this collection which are located at our offsite facility. In particular, this item is not, or this folder is not at our offsite facility. The last piece, which I think is pretty useful, allows you to look at the collection overall, uh, like a broader overview of the collection, and see where you are in relation to the other folders nearby. So if you were looking for a lot of information on Wilburn Cartwright's trip to Japan in 1935, you can see that you have located the map that you were looking for, but also that there might be some supplemental information in folders nearby, likely because they're related to one another. And so you can click on any of these and quickly jump to another folder in the collection. So this is only one way of searching the collections at the, uh, the finding aids for the collections at the Carla Albert Center. Another way is to go to this collections tab here. And again, filter by us. Or you can type in the person's name in this main search to sort of get to the collection faster. But let's say I'm looking for uh, energy policy information in the Dewey Bartlett collection. So I went to collections and I clicked search, filter by the Carl Albert Center collections because I know that this collection is in the Carl Albert Center. And so now it's listing all of our collections alphabetically. And so here I have found the Dewey Bartlett collection. Now this is kind of what I like to call the main collection homepage. This will give you information on the collection, the Bartlett collection itself, the dates that the collection as material is dated to, and if you click on additional description, you can see biographical information on Dewey Bartlett, how the collection is arranged, and any accruals to the collection. You can also see that larger collection organization overview here where you can see all of the different series that the collection has and you can click on the down arrows to display uh, folders within that collection. You can also click here to container inventory. If you know that you saw something last time you were here in box five in the Bartlett collection and you want to see all the folders in box five, you can do that here. But for our purposes, we want to search for the word energy. And we want to only limit our search to the Dewey Bartlett collection because I, I know I want to see Bartlett's energy policy in particular. So there's this handy feature on the sort of collection main page here that is search collection. And this will search only in the Bartlett collection. So we're going to type energy and we're going to click search. And you can see I've got 455 results, but they are all in the Dewey Bartlett collection. Now I can do the same thing here where I can filter within the results. So let's say we wanted to find out information about natural gas. You would probably want to search natural gas because it's a two word term with quotation marks around it. We're going to click search or press enter. And you can see it's narrowed it down quite a lot to 111 results. Now the last piece of this is I like to go over how to request materials here at the Carl Albert Center. 
So I, again, do recommend that you copy and paste that unique identifier, that long string of, uh, string of random letters and numbers, and it'll act like a barcode whenever you contact the archivists. You can send them that, and we will be able to quickly locate exactly what you're looking for. You could also send us the collection title and the box and folder number that you are interested in seeing. So you can contact us in two ways. Uh, if you'd like an in-person appointment, you can fill out our appointment form on our uh, main website. It's a Google form. Uh, or if you want to contact us about a general reference question or a um, reference request, a, a remote reference request, um, or a scan request, you can do that also on our website by filling out the reference request form. And you can see here in the guide that I've explained the difference between the two, where you can decide which one you'd like to use. Or if you prefer, you can just email us directly at cacarchives.ou.edu. This sends an email to a shared inbox where we'll be able to receive your email and one of the archivists will get back to you. There's also a request button that I'm sure you've seen on the website on arc.u.edu, but it's not recommended for a large amount of material. If you have a particular question about a collection or an item that you found and you don't really want to compose an entirely new email, you can click request and it will send us all the information about the item or folder that you are currently viewing um, along with the question that you will type in to the form. So if you have any other questions about how to locate material that for a reference or for a research project, make sure to contact cacarchives at ou.edu. Thanks.